So the gas cap is gone and there's no gas in there. Very interesting. I'll tell you why. Good morning, garden friends. It's Heather at Bush Poppy Farm. It is a very chilly 36 degrees Fahrenheit, two degrees Celsius. Um, we had our first frost last night. Um, today's November 3rd. So early this year, um, but I'm not complaining because I'm pretty much set. I've pretty much got everything in the ground and our ground doesn't freeze so I can keep planting. It's just, you know, it's harder for things that have green on top <laughs> when you plant them in the fall, in the fall, uh, when you've already got frost. Anyway, um, I am heading out to the farm. Right now I'm sitting in the car trying not to shiver because it's very cold in the car. I'm trying to warm it up so I figured I would take this moment uh, to introduce you to today's video which is about the pros and cons of fall garden cleanup. So at my house, which is where I'm at right now, we don't do fall garden cleanup um, for a lot of reasons, and I'll get to those in a second. At the farm, in the future, I'm also going to not do fall garden cleanup. However, as you've seen in the videos, I've got a lot of poison hemlock and a lot of nasty um, thistle those don't die off in the cold here. So I need to go in there and remove those because I don't want them setting seed. Those are particularly nasty and I really don't want those to set seed and keep spreading in the garden. The stuff in the upper field that's tarped, that, the reason I'm leaving that tarp for so long, it'll be tarped all through the winter. It's already been under tarp for over a month. I'm hoping that that will kill off any remaining weed seeds um, that are still under there so that when we go to plant in the early well late spring early summer for summer pull that tarp back everything should be really good but uh, i need to go out there today and remove a bunch of that stuff plus i'm also going to get rid of some things like the zucchini and all that kind of stuff because that stuff just turns to mush and then it's just gross but um, a lot of the other things are going to stay in my home garden um, we don't do any fall cleanup, like I said, because the, the stuff that falls, right, all the leaves, they provide very important habitat for small mammals, songbirds, toads, all types of insects. So whenever you rake away all of those leaves, you're destroying habitat winter habitat for important species that live in your garden. So what do you do with the leaves instead? Well, there's no point in sending them off to the landfill. That's literally a waste. So what we recommend is um, you can uh, put them in your garden beds as mulch, but it will break down and return nutrients to the soil and it's native nutrients. It's nutrients that grew there. So you're not bringing in extra inputs. Um, if you have a lawn that you want to clear of the leaves, try using a mulching mower because it will chop the leaves up very, very fine. And then they act as fertilizer on your lawn. So there's lots and lots of things you can do to use the leaves that are falling in your yard already to help benefit your garden and benefit all of the wildlife that uses it, that relies on it. So cleaning up your beds. Um, it used to be the idea was get it all tidied and neat so that in the spring everything looks fresh and clean. Well, all of those spent seed heads and um, dried leaves on sticks, etc., those are all again food sources and bedding sources and nesting sources for native wildlife. So I would encourage you to leave all of that stuff. What I do is I come in once the once we're past all of our danger of frost in the spring, I will come in and clean everything up, cut things back, tidy them up. And what that does is doing that kind of early spring pruning, that encourages the plants to put on a new burst of growth. So you're actually jump starting your garden by waiting until spring to clean it up. Okay, lecture over. <laughs> Let's head out to the farm. The car is finally a little bit warm. Um, I'm super lucky in this car. It's 
we have a heated steering wheel. And even though I live in Northern California and you think, why does she need a heated steering wheel? We go up to Tahoe a lot and in the winter time. And when it's below zero up there, it feels really good to get in the car and have your steering wheel nice and warm. Um, okay, heading out to the farm, gonna get started on all the cleanup and I'm really looking forward to it. I like this kind of work. It's kind of like ironing and vacuuming. Those are some of my favorite chores because you see the progress, you see the results. It's always very satisfying. <laughs> all right, so let's head out. Okay, arrived at the farm. Uh, after that quarter inch of rain the other day, the new seedlings that I've planted in the new bed look like they're settling right in. They look very perky and happy. That's what you wanna see. You don't wanna see them droopy. You wanna see them nice and upright. Yeah, everything's looking good. Ooh, it's very brisk this morning. Um, very fresh. <laughs> And I do have, I hope, yes, I have special gloves that I'm going to wear for this uh, weed removal. These are our rose gauntlets. So they're not like pierce proof, but they're pretty sturdy. I can still get pierced by those, um, those thistles though. They are nasty. They're way worse than, than uh, rose thorns. I think because they're very, very thin, so they're like hypodermics more than you know like a barbed um, thorn uh, so I'm gonna have to use um, probably uh, a shovel to dig those up because they are huge which means their tap root is probably at least a foot maybe more long um, and so just cutting it off at the base that'll just make it grow back so I'm gonna try to dig those out um, yeah so this is gonna be a big job but I'm looking forward to getting started it like I said, it feels like I'm accomplishing something <laughs> when I get some of this stuff done. Um, so, all right, I'm going to set the camera up and I'll let you guys watch the ultra excitement of weeding. <laughs> Oh my, it's muddy out here. <laughs> okay, so I made a little bit of progress. Um, it just feels like a bigger mess now in some ways, but um, I'll show you what I've cleared and talk about what I still need to do. Okay, so all of this um, lemon basil, which smells amazing by the way, that will also die. It's not frost hardy, um, but that's okay. And so will these nasturtium. Um, but I'm going to leave those in place because the birds and the bees are still using them. Same thing with this Agastache. Uh, these are also perennials and so they'll fill back in. But I had to do some major, major removal. Like, look, do you see the stump on that thing? 
So I need to dig that up. I just didn't have the right shovel with me today. That is from uh, Poison Hemlock. And uh, some of the um, roots were indeed over a foot long. Uh, so when I pulled them up, you know, they broke off in places. So this is just gonna be an ongoing battle until eventually we, we wear out the seed bed. But I tried to get as much of the thistle and stuff out as possible. Oh, there's one still right there. So I need to come back and get that. Um, I'm basically, I need to get better tools. I need to get loppers because this stuff is so sharp that even with my gauntlets, it's, it's poking me real bad. So I wanna come in here with loppers, especially for this area to lop off everything. And then I can dig up the root balls. Um, I did pull out all the stuff that was easy to pull out here, the zucchini and stuff, but you can see these thistles, uh, they just are, they're just brutal. Uh, these, these are more star thistles here. They're just awful. So huge. Now this, <laughs> this wouldn't be, have gotten this bad if I'd been able to keep up with the weeding, but with everything that happened out here, um, I, I, you know, I wasn't here for like two weeks in the hottest time of the year when everything grows. So all of it got out of hand next year. That's going to have to change. So this bed, if you'll remember back in the spring, um, I planted perennials along the back. So that's where the calendula that you see, which will keep, keep blooming all, all winter long. Um, and the rudbeckia and stuff that will stay and keep self seeding and growing. But the front part of this bed is open. There's going to be borage popping back up because those seeds dropped. Um, but the front is for annuals. So I will put in some stuff in the spring here. Um, I still haven't decided if I'm going to put bulbs in or not. I might do that along this bed because there's definitely plenty of space. And by doing that, that also helps crowd out some of the weeds. So um, I might do that. I have so many bulbs left anyway. So even though it's early today, I think I'm going to knock off and I'll go home and get some other work done. But you can see I still have, you know, the rest of this bed to do. And this whole area behind the birdies beds, I've got to do all of this because that's all poison hemlock and uh, thistles. And then um, I have to clear out all of the tomatoes. Also, now that it's rained, I'm gonna top up these uh, beds because uh, it's settled a little bit, which is great. So, you know, all of those bulbs got planted. That's just the skins from the bulbs on top that you're seeing. But um, I'm going to top up these beds with more soil because definitely still have some. So I'll do all that tomorrow, um, pull this out. And then the biggest project that's gonna happen this weekend is end walls. So something pretty, pretty not good happened. Um, that back end wall is weighted down with cinder blocks and like an, like an 80 pound block, but the wind got strong enough that it came loose. The plastic flapped and hit the top cover of one of the hives, blew that top cover off. And then when it rained, it rained into the hive. So I haven't been able to take it apart to check on them because it's been cold and they're trying to hibernate, but that could potentially have killed the whole hive. Again, my fault for not thinking ahead. So learning lessons this year for sure. So this weekend, uh, one of the things I'm going to do tomorrow is come out with a tape measure and have to measure. We're going to put, you know, wooden frame on both ends and I'll have a door on this end on the on the close end that I come and go in uh, to seal the plastic down with wiggle wire like it is sealed everywhere else so that it's not a wind tunnel because um, we do get a lot of wind uh, not so much in the summertime but boy the spring is brutal and uh, I don't even know what the winter is going to be like out here because I haven't had a winter out here yet so um, yeah still plenty of jobs to do um, like I said, I'll come back out. We're supposed to get rain Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, all day Monday and Wednesday, which is wonderful, wonderful. But that means narrow windows to get stuff done. So like I said, tomorrow I'll be out here to, um, you know, take measurements, try to get the tomato beds cleared and the other beds cleared with better tools because I forgot to bring my loppers and the little narrow shovel that's really great for digging up uh, root balls and stuff. So um, that is tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to go home and get some work done there. Hopefully the power's back on. We had a power outage, um, but we are, our house has a 
has the solar glass roof, the Tesla solar glass roof and two back backup batteries. So we were still powered, but we turned everything that's not essential off whenever we have power outages so that we don't drain our batteries out. Um, so hopefully all of that's good. And uh, I just noticed something very interesting. So the gas cap is gone and there's no gas in there. Very interesting. I'll tell you why. The other day when, earlier this week when I saw my broken down fence, the other thing we noticed on the camera was that the, um, the truck that's down there, the gas, that we saw people on camera going to that gas tank and the gas cap was off. I'm thinking they siphoned fuel. I don't know where my cap is. Oh, here it is right here on the ground. Yep. So, I mean, it's not a big deal. Mine's a tiller. This is a tiller that I, I probably won't ever use again, but very interesting. <sighs> kind of dangerous siphoning gas from a truck that's been sitting for a long time. You have no idea what's in that. Uh, but I guess if you're desperate, you're desperate. So yeah, I don't know. I hate that feeling of, of uh, knowing people have been here, like trespassing and doing stuff um, in my area. It's unnerving. All right, well, on that note, I'm gonna close up the uh, greenhouse. See, it's windy today. Luckily, the wind today is coming from the south, pushing the plastic in towards the, <laughs> the high tunnel instead of out towards the bees. Um, hopefully, the wind will die down. It's supposed to, um, but I'm just, I hope we can get the end walls built before the next round of wind. Um, I just don't wanna lose the bees because of my mistakes. Um, they've been through a lot this year too. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for joining me today. Kind of a weird video, not a whole lot going on, I guess. Uh, but I do want to say, please remember, leave your leaves. It's good for the environment. It's good for the native animals and it's good for uh, the climate. Um, actually, because a lot of times these leaves and stuff don't get composted when you turn them in, they just get burned and that releases carbon um, into the atmosphere, which is what we're trying to avoid. <laughs> so please consider leaving your leaves and waiting on doing your fall cleanup until the spring so that you have native uh, habitat for your native wildlife. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a great day, a good time in your garden, wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.